This is my favorite camera, the Fujifilm X100V. And today I wanted to share some of my favorite photos that I've taken with it, as well as my thoughts after owning it for over a year now. First, let's take a look at some of my favorite photos that I've taken with the X100V in the past year. These are a mixture of straight out of camera JPEGs as well as photos that I edited in Lightroom. So for some context, I've always loved photography. I even wanted to be a photographer all throughout high school and even through college. But as I graduated college, I shifted more towards video and now I work full time as a video editor with a really great company. Shortly after I started working, I wanted to get back into photography again now that I had a lot of free time after work to pursue my own hobbies. And so I went online and I started doing some research into what kind of cameras were out there. Why I bought this camera. I bought this camera because I wanted a camera that made me excited to get out and shoot again. I was also looking for something that was a little bit smaller and easier to take with me. At the time, the only camera that I had was the Sony a7S III, which is not a very small or discreet camera when you take it out shooting. And so I found that when I went to go take it out to take photos or videos, people would generally stop and take a look at whatever I was shooting just because I was walking around with a bigger camera with a pretty big lens at the time I was using my 24 to 70 which is quite a fat lens to be honest and it just wasn't very discreet and I really didn't enjoy the attention that I was drawing when I was taking it out for that reason it made me feel a bit hesitant to take this camera out to the city to go shoot and also in general, the past couple of years, the local news have been reporting about how photographers in the Bay Area have been getting robbed or mugged more, like either getting mugged in like broad daylight while they're out shooting for clients, doing portraits, or even getting targeted and followed home. Those were <laughs> reason enough for me to kind of reconsider taking this big camera out with me shooting because I feel like, you know, walking around I might seem like an easy target. <laughs> especially if I was going out shooting by myself, I just didn't feel comfortable taking this big camera with me, especially knowing how much it costs, <laughs> to be honest. And so that's why I was looking to downsize into a nice, compact, portable camera that did not turn heads. <laughs> so I went online and started doing more research into Fujifilm cameras. Ultimately, it came down to the X100V and the XE4 for me. I ended up choosing the X100V because of its fixed lens. I just simply couldn't justify buying more lenses and getting myself into a whole new ecosystem when I already own a lot of Sony gear. So I ended up buying my camera secondhand from the photo market subreddit. But I will talk about that more in a little bit. First, I wanna talk about things that I love about this camera. First and foremost, the size. I love how small and compact this camera is. It makes it super easy for me to just stick it in my sling bag and take it with me everywhere I go. Having a smaller camera makes me want to take it out more. And so I end up shooting more, which is great. Another thing I love about this camera is the image quality. This camera has 26 megapixels, which is more than enough for me personally. And it's good enough that I can blow up my images and I can print them out and frame them and enjoy them on the wall but it's also not too large to the point where your computer is dying because of all the memory that you're eating up from having five photos. I really love that it has a fixed lens. I think it's great that I never have to think twice about what lens to bring with me when I go out and shoot. I also really like that it prevents me from buying lenses that I definitely don't need, but always want. <laughs> I also like that it pushes me to get more creative with my compositions because I 
am limited by what my lens can do. I understand that that can be annoying for some people and it's not for everyone, so keep that in mind. I also really enjoy how once you put a filter on the front of your camera, it becomes weather sealed. So that was really nice knowing that when I was in Asia earlier this year and I got rained on, I didn't have to worry about my camera getting ruined because I had a filter on. I really love the straight out of camera JPEGs that I can get using film simulations. Honestly, this is a really big reason as to why I even bought a Fujifilm camera. I was really excited to get to ditch the editing and just shoot and enjoy that and just be happy with whatever comes out of my camera. I used to shoot mainly using a Sony a6300 and it got to a point where I was kind of dreading going out to shoot just because I knew that I'd be spending just as much time editing the photos as I was shooting them. It was just kind of sucking the fun out of the shooting because I was never happy with what I got right away, if that makes sense. Like I ended up having to put in a lot of work in order to get something that I was happy with, with Sony images. I really enjoy going online and finding new recipes as well as making my own. And it's just truly been a lot of fun getting to do all that. It just brings in a whole new level to the shooting experience and it's just been really great. I really enjoy it. I wouldn't fully compare shooting Fuji to shooting film just because they're so, they just really are so different. The only thing they kind of share in common is like the colors at the end. But the nice thing about shooting Fuji is that I'll never have to go through this again. This is my role of shame. This is when I developed, or I guess I could say I tried to develop film at home. So thanks to Fuji, I'll never have to deal with that heartbreak again. There it goes. But going back to film simulations, I really enjoy using these profiles in Lightroom to process my raw files. I just really love Fuji colors in general, and I truly feel that once I get the photo into Lightroom and I apply one of the film simulation profiles, I hardly have to do anything to get the image looking really good. Maybe I'll make a separate video further explaining my post-processing workflow. Another thing I really like about this camera is the fact that I can capture high quality videos in a pinch. The X100V is definitely not my go-to video camera, but when I need to, I can capture really nice video still. It can shoot 4K and an F-Log, which is super nice. The one downside about shooting video on the X100V is that there is no image stabilization at all. And this camera is so small and light that you'd capture every single little jitter. So if you're gonna try and do video, make sure you have steady hands or you can rest it somewhere. And last but not least, I just love how fun this camera is to use. This camera has inspired me to take more photos again and to even revive my old little middle school YouTube account. And now I make photography videos and I'm just really happy. And now I'm just really enjoying shooting and making videos about things that I really love and sharing it with people. And then also above all else, getting to interact with people it's been a really cool year, honestly, of posting again and getting to talk to people who also love photography. So thank you if you're still watching. I really appreciate you. Now that I've shared some of my favorite parts about this camera, I'm going to share some things that you might like to know about this camera before getting it. One thing that's pretty apparent right off the bat when you start using this camera is that the focus is not the fastest. For me, it's never truly failed me unless I'm in a low light situation. It works perfectly fine in bright daylight, but sometimes I do feel that it is a little slow. So just keep that in mind. It definitely works perfectly fine in a street setting when I'm just trying to capture a moment that I'm passing by. However, you just gotta be aware of like a darker alleyway that you're walking around or nighttime. Nighttime, I find that it struggles sometimes, but yeah, if it's well lit, you're good to go. Another thing to note about this camera is that if you're shooting with clarity turned on, it will slow down your shooting process, if that makes sense. Like the camera has to take a moment to process the image that you just took. So don't plan on using clarity if you're gonna go out and shoot street photos, let's say. In general, I've never really found a reason for me to keep clarity on. I only ever turn it on when I make recipe videos for YouTube. One thing about this camera that just really sucks is the price. I cannot believe the prices that I see this camera going for on the photo market subreddit or even online on eBay and even on Amazon. There's no way I can recommend this camera to anyone if the only way you can get it is used for $1,800. Just 
don't do it. Please don't. <laughs> We're already coming to the end of 2022, about to get into 2023, and we should be getting to a new X100 camera soon. Maybe. Hopefully. And yeah, I mean, at this point, we're closer to a new one than the release of the X100V. So just don't do it. Save your money, buy the new camera whenever it comes out. That'll be way more worth it. And now I wanted to talk a little bit about how I ended up getting this camera, as well as tips that I have for you guys and also other options. So at the time that I got this camera in August of 2021, it was already really hard to find. And the only places I could find it were on eBay or on the photo market subreddit. And at that time, photo market was having the better prices. So I just stayed on there and every day I was just looking for it. But I just got really lucky and I caught an early post and was able to buy this camera for just under retail. Yeah, I can't fully say that I would recommend you use photo market to go after an X100V today. Every X100V that I've seen sold recently goes within just a few minutes. So you either have to be really on it or find a different way to get one. I really don't think it's worth paying over retail for a more than two year old camera at this point. What I would recommend though, is checking in with your local camera store. I just saw this tweet yesterday from this user. He posted a photo of X100Vs in stock at his local camera store and he just wanted to like, reassure people that camera stores are getting them. They are coming in. Don't worry, there's not a super bad shortage. Just kidding, there is, but like, they're not impossible to get anymore. So honestly, I would recommend that you check in with your local camera stores because that's your best bet at getting a normal priced X100V that's brand new, not used, so. Or you can just I know you don't want to hear this, but you could just hang on to your money and save and wait for that new X100 camera that will come out in the future. And it will be better than the X100V. So there's always that. In conclusion, this is still my favorite camera that I've ever used, I've ever owned. It is so much fun for me to shoot with it. And I just love it. It is really unfortunate that the camera is just super overpriced right now. I feel very lucky to have gotten it when I did. And to everyone who's looking into buying one right now, I wish you the best of luck in finding one at a good price. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, maybe. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And maybe just say hi in the comments. I love talking to you guys and interacting. And make sure to let me know your thoughts on this camera. If you'd buy it, do you already own it? What do you think about it? Do you love it? I'm just very curious. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time.